So talking a little bit more about PvP in New World, or should, I sh or sh I should say, the lack of PvP. And it's usually because a lot of people don't flag. I mean, you've got a really, really large map. This map might not look like it, but in terms of someone who came from the Elder Scrolls Online, this map is bigger than ESO Cyrodiil. And that map was actually pretty huge. Now, that's not bad when there is a given direction. Because in ESO, you've got all these different keeps and outposts. And so you really don't see people on the fringes of the map. Most people will basically group up in certain areas so that obviously PvP can take place. It is the area where there is a war going on. And it makes it so weird because in the very beginning of the game, you're told to pick a faction. I'm, I'm not a fan of the three-way faction because all it does is kind of whittle down the people that you can group with as well as the people that you can fight against in terms of PvP. Now, of course, you can group with all different people, but that's for PvE, and I'm not a PvE player, and frankly, this is not a PvE game as there really isn't a lot of... Uh, variety in terms of the mobs that you fight the same mobs that you come across at level you know 1 to 10 you're going to come across at 10 to 20 uh, I mean at 20 to 30 and 30 to 40 all the way up until end game with maybe a couple of added mobs here and there but for the most part the game is not designed around PvE and frankly neither really are the mechanics there's not a bunch of skills in the game to like in most games where you play wow you've got like 30 skills if you play ESO, since there's no resource management, you have access to five skills and an ultimate, plus another five and an ultimate on your back bar. Because there's a rotation involved with the game that was primarily made not just for PvP, but also for PvE. Along with a wide variety of quests, it was lore. This game has none of that. has no lore, has no storytelling, none of that. Why? Because the game was designed for the player versus player interaction it's one of the reasons why people are like why are there no mounts every time i'm watching somebody streaming this game they're literally walking everywhere they go and it's because as you were walking around this huge portion of the map you were supposed to fight over these different territories and this is where new world has gone terribly wrong and i said this in my original video talking about how new world leaving pvp would completely ruin the game and frankly, even the point of picking a, picking a different side. Like, what's the point of being a marauder or being a member of the Covenant? And I can literally walk right into your land and never get attacked because I refuse to flag. Not only that, it's so weird where you own a town, you own certain areas, and an enemy, even from a lore perspective, even from just like a, a roleplay perspective, it makes absolutely no sense that... An enemy faction can literally walk right into your town and not be attacked. It makes absolutely no sense. And that's why in many other games, like even in WoW, like you can't just walk as an enemy uh, opponent. If you're a horde, you can't just walk into the other, uh, other opponent's side without the NPCs attacking you because you are an enemy combatant, but not in this game. And it's because they left the pvp model the foundation of what this game was built on i mean it literally makes no point in holding all of these different areas because there's really no battle that takes place because you're not fighting over anything you can do pve quests and pve quests add to strengthening your realm but it does absolutely but there's no reason for you to to flag for pvp especially because if you have let's say maybe 800 members that are on a particular side it only you only require 50 players from any given faction to fight over specific keeps and so i can make i can make a clan another another group of people can make uh another guild etc and i sign up and i invite who i want and if i don't want to invite you maybe you're low level and i only want to recruit 60s and you're 45 well then you can't participate into the main objective of the pvp so it leaves this huge portion of people who want to participate in pvp sitting there scratching my head like well what the hell am i supposed to do now nobody's out here flagging there's no battlegrounds to be spoken of so what do i do if i'm a person who wants to be who wants to pvp and i'm sitting here flagged i watch a lot of different streamers 
uh, from you know old ESO streamers that have moved over into into world of um, into new world. Cipher PK is another person who was primarily into you know shooters and playing Fortnite and other games like that, and has now found his love. And as I'm watching him, he says the same thing. It's like I see all these people, but nobody's flagged. And a lot of other streamers that I come across say the exact same thing. They're like, why are all these people? And I see people both on my side as well as people who are on the oppo opposing side and they just aren't flagged for pvp in fact even when you look at the forums there are people that ask that very same thing they're like i see all these people that i come across you look at the new world forums there's always people talking about pvp and how weapons for pvp i am going to talk about balance but there's a lot of questions of people who are like i can't find the kind of pvp like there's no end game right there's no end game in this game there's no lore in this game. They're not really... They're dungeons, but once you do the dungeons and you kind of get what you need, you kind of move on. And especially because when you hit 60, there's just not an incentive. And I hear a lot of people saying, well, they need to incentivize this. They need to incentivize this. That's not the point of player versus player. You see, had they stuck with... And this is why I said in my other video... That the two schools of I want lore and I want to role play and I want, you know, all these different mobs and I want cool gear. That doesn't really mesh well in a player versus player environment. Because when things become super OP in PvE and then you need to nerf them because of PvP, this all that happens is this. People start, hey, why are you nerfing my PvE because of your PvP? And why is your PvE interfering with my PvP? And this is why I said that the schools of thought especially today they don't they don't mesh well especially when it comes to balancing for pve especially if you're doing raids and harder raids and this was the huge problem in the elder scrolls online where the developers because you always had these people that were like i want a stamina whip or i want this ability and so what the developers would do is because they didn't know how to balance skills they didn't know how to sit here and balance skills because people were like well why can your class do this and my class can't do that? Well, why Why is your class such a good healer and my class can't heal? And so they would mesh everything together until it became this very generic game. And they just said, fuck it. We ain't going to worry about PvE anymore. We're just going to sell cosmetics. We're going to sell a whole bunch of houses. And that's basically going to be the gist of the game. We're going to pump, pump out some mediocre content that you're going to pay $40 every couple of months for. And we're going to leave it at that. And that's basically what ESO became. It had the ability... Because of the combat system to be an amazing game that people would still be playing now. Most of the people who stream ESO are streaming New World. They lost the vast majority of their content creators to other games because they don't know how to create games for longevity. New World seems to be going in that same direction. It was never designed for PvE. New World was never designed to be this long progressive PvE game that you could play and you interact with the with the lore and you hear the storyline and you keep moving forward. It was never meant for that. All these mobs, that's why all the mobs look the same. They're so very generic. And they're just all they do is just change the level and change the amount of damage that they do. So one of the ways that I had originally proposed how New World could fix it was the model that Lineage 2 utilized, where everybody is basically, it's a free-for-all. There are no factions, but you can create guilds. Those guilds can go to war with each other, as well as those very same guilds can um, fight over castles and over settlements. So very much how now, how a, a covenant or a faction, what do they call them? I forget what they call um the guild in this games but when you when you when you make a guild in the game you can then sign up to attack a certain area but it's limited to 50 v 50 now from what i've watched and i haven't had the opportunity to participate because one i'm too low level and two you have to be within one of these guilds that are going to invite you and of course since it's limited to 50 v 50 you're going to take your blessed your best and most highly geared players now in lineage 2 that did not happen literally anybody could walk on the battlefield so if there was a if there was a keep let's say like this keep was flagged for for player versus player anybody in the entire map could walk to that castle and there was actually very little lag and then, I mean, we're talking like 15 20 years ago uh where you had hundreds of players that would be fighting and converging 
in this one area. They would fight on the battle, and everybody was, in essence, flagged for PvP. Now, the way that they did it was whenever you walked anywhere outside of a town, once you were in a town, the towns were considered safe zones. Anywhere outside of the town, you were, in essence, free to attack. You could, be, you could force attack someone. So, right now, if I come across someone who was flagged, right, I have my PvP off right now. But let's say I come across someone who's flagged, I can attack that person freely. That imitates much the guild versus guild fighting. So if I was in a guild that was at war with another guild, we didn't need to flag on each other. But the way that they could do it in this game is that in essence, to flag on someone, you have to press control. That's how they did it. So you had to control flag. So you had to force flag against someone. And of course, that means that there would need to be a PK system, a player kill system, which would involve, which is what they had, was a bounty system. Um, Lineage 2 had a bounty system. So if you killed someone who did not flag back on you, you, you died, you had to respawn, but that person then turned red. Their name, very much like what you see in New World now. You come across players whose names are red, but when a person's name was red in that game, it meant that they PK'd somebody and I could kill you for free without having to flag against that person, just that person. So when you flagged against someone, your name would flash purple for a few seconds. And if you kept on flagging against that person, then your name would stay purple and other people could flag against you. And, and what it allowed for is maybe I, I wasn't PVPing, but I see somebody getting jumped and then I choose to help that person. Now I'm flagging for PVP without actually having to go back to town, flag for PVP, and then always be open. This was one of the things that they complained about in the very beginning of the game with lobbies being ganked by high level players at starters areas, and there was no penalty for it. And you have to create a penalty, which is a bounty system. And of course, those individuals would show up on the map. They would show up on the map as a, a skull and crossbones indicating that that person had a bounty and you could click on that person's name it showed where they were you could see them on the map and the bounty system will alert you hey there is a bounty for this individual and he is in brightwood and you open up brightwood and oh i see he's over here now he might be with a whole group of people he just might be kind of the the bait to lure you out because maybe he's got a whole group of people that want to act as marauders and they're going to kill everybody and so it initiates PvP between the different groups. Maybe a, 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 a warring clan member from another guild will come over and kill that individual, and you would get a reward. Now, if I flagged on somebody and I killed that some person, and I did not, uh, and that person did not flag back on me, and I killed them, and my name went red. Now, the only, the other penalty was that you could drop your gear. So if you were actually wearing your gear or anything within your inventory could fall. And that was kind of the system that New World had originally, where you originally you killed opponents and those opponents dropped gear, which is why there's there's a plentiful crafting system in this game where you can just pump out crafting items very readily. And that was kind of the point of what they originally had. And it was kind of dumb that they just threw all that out to create what they have today, because this game won't last. It, it has nothing in the game that will retain PvP players, and there's nothing in the game that will retain PvE players. And depending upon which route that they choose to go, it will alienate a portion of the people who play the game. For the people who came to play this game because they were looking forward to that player versus player environment, they'll leave. And then, and then this game will just be another generic PvE MMO. And it's like, you can just play ESO. You can just play World of Warcraft. You can go play Final Fantasy, which is one of the reasons why so many people were looking forward to this game because it was going to be different than what was already out there. And of course, they decided to basically throw all of that out. And it just it just doesn't make a lot of sense from a player versus player being inclusive. I mean, just the concept doesn't make sense anymore to, to have factions. The concept of factions doesn't even make sense if you're not even allowed to participate in the wars because the wars are limited to 50 v 50 so what really am i doing picking a faction it does it really doesn't make any sense it also just limits the people who i can fight against because maybe i want to fight against everybody maybe i want to be able to fight against everybody on the map or anybody in the game 
And if your clan or your side is winning, well then after a couple of months, you have the opportunity where you can uh, change, change sides, so to speak. But I never like the whole three-way war. It's either one way or the other. But it typically, it typically works out best creating just a free-for-all experience where everybody can be attacked. But there's penalties for attacking someone who doesn't fight against you. There's penalties for being high level and fighting against low level players, which means you don't have to worry about this whole balancing system between scaling. That that whole system can be kind of thrown out um, because you can just get to end game, get the gear that you need, and then be competitive. Or if you get PK'd and you're just not looking a flag, maybe you're completely outnumbered and there's nothing you can do and you're just going to get ganked. Well, then the penalty will be that you're going to have to force to PK me because I'm not going to flag. I'm not going to flag back, and then you can run the risk of losing your gear. And that's basically the route I think for PVP for New World to actually be enjoyable for the masses. That is my my opinion on. I was hoping New World was going to go that way. Ashes of Creation it looks like Ashes of Creation is going that way. That is the system that Ashes of Creation has implemented. But Ashes of Creation is so far off. But this is kind of what we're stuck with. And moving forward, if New World doesn't make a lot of changes and a lot of changes quick, people are just going to leave the game. Because I mean, forget about the bugs. For, and that, let's not even talk about balancing. Just the concept of including other people who came to PvP, like having a 50v50 and having it be timed, and otherwise if there's nothing going on of your server, you're relegated to just grinding, people aren't gonna stick around for that over the long term. And that's just my opinion. I, I read a lot of the forums, I watch a lot of people in uh, Twitch chats and see what they talk about, and a lot of people are basically saying the exact same thing, that there's not a whole lot to do, there's not a lot of people, there's not a lot of people flagging, and what they're hoping and what they're waiting for is server transfers and if server transfers don't do it and this is this is why i just don't understand like originally when they said that they were going to go the route of the whole flagging system people were just like just create pvp servers free for all and then just create your pve servers and they didn't want to do that and so now you have groups and and guild leaders that are like okay we're waiting for server transfers because we're going to take our guild and move over to this server well what happens if that server becomes full then what does half your guild get thrown out are they going to merge servers are people just going to get left out and get stuck on pve servers and not be able to um create characters because they'll be locked out this creates a huge problem for a lot of people who who purchase the game who are going to be very disappointed over the next couple of months and if like i said if they don't make a lot of these decisions very quickly, this game will be dead more than likely in three months, at the least from a PvP perspective, but I would think even more so from a PvP, PvE perspective, because there's nothing to do endgame. There's already people that are level 60. There's a huge amount of people that are level 60, and all they're relegated to doing right now is just grinding. But grinding for what? There's no point. <laughs> like, if you're already at endgame within a couple of weeks, and you're already max level, or all you love to do is just get new gear to do what? To do nothing. Just makes absolutely no sense. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. That is basically my rant for today. And I'll check you out next time.